everyone, this is Jason. And I'm Lorraine. And this is the Sow the Land podcast. And if this is your first time listening to our podcast, uh, we also uh, YouTube this podcast for our, our Sow the Land YouTube channel. And really, this podcast is about uh, homestead life, right? Right. And also, <laughs> like an update on what we did for the week and yeah, just kind of like... Just kind of talking about our day and, yeah. and sharing with everyone on uh, just kind of our journey uh, starting this homestead life out in uh, the mountains of North Carolina. Um, so we haven't done a podcast in like a month and a half. Yeah, it's been about a month and a half from now. We're talking uh, in our kitchen actually, <laughs> <laughs> where we do these podcasts. Um, so uh, usually I'll put the podcast on before uh, the actual YouTube video um, and then you can listen to the podcast on iTunes and Spotify and all the most of the uh, podcast apps that are out there and then we'll throw it on our uh, YouTube channel and you can also watch us do the podcast so if you're watching us doing the podcast uh, these podcasts are really just basically just really simple uh, simple format just us talking having a conversation talking to the camera you know these are not super edited we're trying to keep it simple. Uh, there's not like a bunch of uh, camera angles or anything that we're that you're used to seeing. And, and it's not live. It's pre-recorded. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, so think of it as a podcast first. It's first of all, it's a podcast, and we just happen to have the camera on. <laughs> and these are great for if you are working in your garden or on the drive to work, maybe dropping off the kids from school or whatever, and you can just. Tr- flip it on and listen to us yeah I had we had many people like say hey I'm in the garden and I'm listening to you I'm listening to your podcast <laughs> so I think that's pretty cool or even like driving to work I'm like hey I'm listening to Soul the land so that's yeah. kind of cool <laughs> yeah that's great so today's topic is going to be about today's topic is backyard chicken processing and we want to talk about there's a lot of things to talk yeah. about there. Backyard chicken processing. I mean, what is it like? You know, four, maybe five, maybe six, seven years ago. Seven years ago, we we never thought we would be doing it, but here we are in the mountains of Western North Carolina, in our backyard processing our chickens. Yeah, we just butchered thirty chickens, about thirty chickens, uh, this last week, and we're gonna do thirty more in a few weeks. And this is already our sixth time doing it here i mean we've done it multiple times off our property yeah off our property with just with friends and yeah. like workshops and stuff like that and but this is our sixth time doing it here in our backyard yeah it kind, of, it kind of seems like that's all we do in the summer <laughs> we process chickens like we do that a lot <laughs> yeah even though we do it basically we do it two, twice twice a year for ourselves. Yeah, we've been doing uh, 30 batches at once. So we'll do 30 one time and then do a 30 the next time. Uh, and plus helping our friends too during that whole time, <laughs> during the whole spring, summer months. Um, but I, I think it's, you know, what, seven years ago when we were in California, uh, that's when we are uh, uh, started to look at uh, nutrition and starting to figure out what kind of meat is good you know because we eat meat and so uh, we wanted to eat the healthiest meat right not and just you know something that could possibly make us sicker you know and we right. started researching um, like pasture raised meat and the health benefits that it has on your body you know, just eating like whole animal and not just muscle meat, you know, eating, using the whole animal, an animal that has been raised in a healthy way and have been, has been fed healthy food, <laughs> you know, and it has been out in the sunshine. So if you're not familiar with pasture raised animals, that's basically, um, what it is, it's like a healthy, healthy animal eating what it's supposed to be eating, raised in a way 
that it's supposed to be raised non-conventionally, like not the way that standard America is doing it. Um, you know, outside in the sun, enjoying beautiful green grass and healthy bugs and, you know, so anyhow, we, we, you know, we researched that and we wanted to find, we, we, we went on this journey of like wanting to find pasture raised meat and healthy meat for our family. And, um, yeah, so this is, this is the story of our journey <laughs> of like having to find that. So I think I remember, uh, wondering what i think we kept on reading books um this was I, I don't even think we even watched youtube at that time right or uh yeah i don't think we watched youtube at all at that time it, i think youtube uh it was mainly for like how-to videos really um but even then i never watched youtube so it's like didn't really know uh how to look for this stuff and so i remember some books that we would read and pasture poultry, that that, that that term pasture poultry would pop up. And I said, what? I didn't understand what that was. And so I remember Googling it, like, pasture poultry. And I remember the only thing that really popped up was Joel Salatin. He's like the, you know, the godfather of pasture poultry. Um, so his farm is in Virginia. And he's the, that's the only thing that would pop up. He, he's the only guy that does pasture poultry, I guess. But we're in California, we're like, okay, we're not going to buy his chicken because, <laughs> you know, it's so far away. Yeah. And so uh, we just kept on doing research and trying to figure out, you know, where can we get this pastured poultry? It was like such a, like a, a foreign thing. Like yeah, we, you know? it was foreign because let's back up a little bit before we started researching. The only thing we knew where meat comes from was the grocery store. Yes. That's all we knew. Like that concept of it coming some from somewhere else. I mean, we knew obviously it came from a farm and went to the store, but like that never crossed our minds that like people could be doing this in their backyard or um, smaller scale uh, farms would be raising these animals in a different way. It never crossed our minds until we started researching the health of the meat that we are going to be consuming yeah i think that's just one of those uh, out of sight out of minds type thing where you just don't think about it like you just take it for granted that there's meat in the grocery store yeah. and we just go and buy it like no questions asked right. don't ask questions how it was raised or what kind of meat it is or, or anything or what the process it went through to be butchered yeah it was just there and we bought it and that was it yeah. So it's like a disconnect, you know. Very like disconnected. We're disconnected from our food. Yeah. Um, and so as we were keep on researching it, and then uh, I remember a Facebook, like a Facebook pop, just like a suggested uh, post popped up, and it said that there was this local farm that was started selling pastured poultry. And I thought, wow, okay, this is it. This is what we're looking for. And we started following them. Uh, it's following their posts on Facebook and they would share so much information the kind of information that we were reading about in books about why using the whole animal is good and nourishing to your body you know instead of muscle meats we can eat the organ meats and these organ meats are so nourishing and we could use the carcass and, and the feet to make bone broth and that's healing and we were on board oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, we ended up purchasing chickens from them, and uh, their farm was uh, in Temecula, California, and uh, they were called Primal Pastures. I mean, if you look up Primal Pastures now, they're big. They're huge now. <laughs> they're, they deliver practically half of the United States. Like they're one of the biggest pasture poultry farms. Yeah, they blew that, up really fast. That's out there right now. Yeah. And at that time, they were just barely starting out. They were just starting out. And so I remember when we went to go, okay, we bought this chicken. And so I think we bought some eggs too. And uh, We were so excited. <laughs> we thought we were going to pull up to like a farm, like with a red, big red barn <laughs> and a farmer man with overalls. And maybe he has a very long beard and a straw hat was going to come out. <laughs> 
and <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what we were thinking. No, I was thinking uh, uh, like a hundred year old farmhouse. Yeah. You know, like like a, like a like a dream. Like yeah. like a like everything that we that that's a typical farm. Like we would see it, and it would be amazing. And I thought he was going to have like this little grocery store where we would have walk into this refrigerated section like the grocery store and it would be already diced up for you. I mean, we knew we were buying a whole bird, but like in my mind, this diced up, very cleanly packaged, you know, the kind on the styrofoam wrapper. We thought that's, yeah. you know, in my mind, that's what we thought. Very country and like, I thought just, just perfect. I was picturing perfect, perfect like farm, uh, farmer's market type thing. Yeah. But so we showed up and it was just, it was practically like in like, um, kind of like a it, suburb, like a city. It was, well, it wasn't a it city. Was it was like a suburb, but it was, um, it was more like a residential. There you go. Residential. Yeah. Residential neighborhood. I mean, there was rolling pastures. Yeah. There's mainly vineyards, yeah. vineyards in that area. Yeah. A lot of wineries. It was a beautiful farm, but it wasn't. The farm we we were like old McDonald's farm. What we yeah, were yeah. thinking of, <laughs> but it was like, oh, there's like a house here. Yeah, it was like a regular like house that we would probably live in yeah. at the time, and we didn't know where to go. <laughs> yeah, and then and then all of a sudden, this uh, their garage door just rolls up, and. The guy comes out, and, and he's not old McDonald wearing overalls. <laughs> he's like wearing workout clothes. Like I think he has yeah. like like gym shorts, like or running shorts yeah. and some running shoes. It looked like he just came back. And from he a was run. young. He was like our age. Yeah, <laughs> and and just a t-shirt and a ball cap. Yeah, and I'm like, I, I thought it was the wrong place. Yeah, <laughs> I thought um, we bought chicken. Yeah, and he's like, oh yeah, this is us. And he's like, and then he uh, opened up. He had like a bunch of coolers in his garage and he opened them up and there was just full of chicken and i was like okay and he gave us his chicken and yeah i remember you walked back to the car and i was like <laughs> what just happened i mean i remember you said that you you, you felt like we were doing something illegal yes it did feel that way <laughs> like I we just like... bought chicken in someone's <laughs> garage <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Like, I thought, like, the cops were going to roll up and, like, bust us or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was... I was like, we got to take this home and eat it now? Like, this yeah. is weird. Like, I felt like, like, hurry up and put the chicken in the car. Let's go, go, go. Yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> and then we got home and I was like, what am I going to do with this thing? Like... <laughs> yeah, it was... Like, somebody, like, butchered this. But I, But I remembered having to go home and cook it i remembered what they shared on their feed that this is wholesome this is a healthy bird raised in the conditions that you that is like optimal com conditions like the healthiest bird that is going to nourish your body and i believed it with all of my heart yes and that's what kind of kept the fear away when i was like opening this package going we just bought this bird out of somebody's garage except from some guy wearing gym shorts. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we ate the bird. None of us got sick because you, obviously you're not going to get sick. But, <laughs> you know. Right, there was that, that, that fear of like, oh, what if we get sick out of this? Like, it, yeah. was, it, is it, was it sanitary? Is it sanitary conditions? Like, right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, well, we believed, though. We believed and we still do. Yes. Um, we believe that this bird was raised in the most healthy way and fed the most healthiest. Yeah, and raised on grass and moved yeah. in a chicken tractor every day. And Under we believed that and we uh, trusted them uh, and believed what they were saying. And uh, I think that was key. And so we just kept going and then we cooked it. And we ate it. And it was delicious. And it was amazing. It was delicious. And it was like, this is it. Yeah, I don't know when, when some people say like, oh, pastured poultry is a little tougher. I don't believe it at all. I mean, I think it's all in the way you cook it. It yeah. was delicious. It was tender. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, I think that was like a weird experience at first. but Yeah, and then they got bigger, and then they started offering workshops. Yes, and then we took... A workshop it was actually we did it for Valentine's Day that was our Valentine's <laughs> Day gift to each other and I was like oh well you can do it I'll just watch mm -hmm. but um, I, I never thought that I would be 
actually doing it myself. But right. yeah, you... Well, I think right around that same time we took the workshop, we were talking about homesteading. Yeah, possibly. Like, like possibly like, well, if we were to buy some land somewhere, I would love to raise our own chickens for meat. And so it was like this this thought that we had, and it was the very beginning stages of of our homesteading journey. And, and when we first started talking about it, and we said, "Okay, well, here's a workshop that they're doing on yeah. how to butcher your own chickens." Yeah. And I thought, okay, <laughs> so that we should take this workshop. If I mean, if eventually one day we 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 would get land. I I mean, I don't know if it would happen, but. Uh, we probably should know how to butcher our own chickens. Yeah. And so we took the workshop and they were so educational. This at workshop was so educational and the guys over at Primal Pastures, they were so hands-on and so informative. They, we asked a lot of questions and, and it turns out they, and this is no secret to them, they share this information too. They started out um, raising pastured birds on what was it an acre of land or a half I think it was a I think it was one and a half acres one and a half acres and we kind of thought hey we could do this <laughs> yeah we could do it on one and a half acres they planted a seed yeah that was like so all you need is one and a half acres to raise I think they raised, they were raised 60 birds. chickens yeah. or something yeah. and uh, I was like wow that's all you need is one and a half acres to do this yeah and so I remember when we took the workshop, I think driving to the workshop, it was like a kind of a, I mean, I think it was kind of like a sick feeling in my stomach because I, I had never, actually I had never touched a chicken yeah. prior. <laughs> um, and so now we're going to go butcher a chicken. <laughs> I didn't feel anything in the car ride over there. I was just looking out the window, enjoying like the beautiful scenery. I didn't, I didn't feel anything until we got there and we thought, and I saw the chickens walking around and I thought, oh wait, we have to take it from walking around to our freezer. Like yeah. that concept was like, whoa, how is that going to happen? Right. But these chickens are alive. Is yeah. that what happens behind the scenes at the grocery store? Like <laughs> it, like that's how disconnected we were from our food. It was like, whoa, this chicken's alive. It's walking around and it has feathers and it's, you know, it drinks water, it eats, and, you know. Right, and we're about to butcher it. Yeah. Um, and there was a good group there that was there, and, uh, I mean, there was definitely, like, a weird feeling, because I, can't, I had to, like, you know, there was definitely some, like, afraid feelings, like, scared, mm -hmm. kind of. But, um, you know, I went in there, and, and I grabbed a chicken, and we butchered it, and it, it was, it was definitely weird, but yeah, I mean, it, it definitely was a weird feeling doing that for the first time, um, but it also felt like it was important for us to do, to, to do that. I mean, I mean, if we're really serious about raising chickens and, and raising our own meat, I mean, this was a, a very important workshop that we needed to do. It was very important also if we didn't decide to homestead and, and raise our own meat. It was very important to know the food that we're putting into our body, where this meat is coming from, how it was raised, how it was butchered. We saw with our own eyes like how humanely this animal was raised and taken care of and butchered and, and served its purpose to become food to nourish our bodies. Yes. So that was equally important too. I think. But yeah, that, I think that definitely uh, planted a seed in us and, and thought, okay, we could do this. And then we actually took, we did uh, two workshops with them. We did. <laughs> uh, I think it was maybe the following year or something. Um, we did another workshop because I thought, okay. Let's do it one more time. Uh, this homesteading journey is, is starting to get serious. This homestead talk yeah. is starting to get serious. And uh <laughs> So let's keep on let's keep on doing it, and just to be more comfortable around chickens in, in doing that. Um, but uh, so fast forward, you know, seven years now. You know, we've been here three and a half years, and we're doing it ourselves, and we're teaching people how to do it. Yeah. Um, 
I think we've taught, I mean, I can think of on top of my head, since we've been here, probably seven different families mm -hmm. on how to butcher chickens. Um, and including children as well. Yes. It's always like a family event when we butcher chickens. It's, it's harvest day. It's our harvest day and it's a family celebration. We've, we've spent, you know, anywhere from eight to 12 weeks raising these, these birds that have a purpose for our family and it's harvest day and we're celebrating that together and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about like, when we first moved here, that's when we started raising our own chickens and then we butchered our own chickens for the first time in our backyard. You know, we have, how old was Penelope at the time? She was four. Four years two, old. Yeah. Um, and so I think there was a definitely like a, like, okay, should we tell her we're going to be butchering chickens? <laughs> like, I think for, right? I mean. Yeah, we weren't sure because we've had some families that asked us like, oh, is she afraid or, I mean, we took the workshop. She wasn't, she didn't come with us. She just stayed with grandma because we were we paid for this workshop and we kind of wanted to be like all minds in and not have to run around um after a toddler but um when we were on our property she's obviously there we were like do we include her or how do we explain this process to her but we didn't explain anything we just said we were making chicken <laughs> yeah i mean this is i think we just explained like from i think from day one when we got the chickens like hey these are gonna be meat these are our meat birds yeah like we're gonna put these guys in our freezer. Even I think we, we went to the grocery store and be like, see this package of chicken here? This is what our chicken is gonna look like. Yeah, and then done. she's also seen me, she helps me out a lot in the kitchen. And she's also seen me take, when we purchased um, whole chickens from Primal Pastures before, um, with the feet and the necks, and she's seen me take a whole chicken cook it and then save the bones and the feet and the next for bone broth so she's she she knows that process she's familiar with seeing a bird yeah so but it, i think when we process the chickens i she didn't ask i mean she didn't she didn't it didn't bother her like she knew this is what we were doing right i think almost it's like i think us as parents were i think we kind of freak out about yeah. how that how they how she was going to react in but we just kind of let her decide like let her be yeah and like not make a big deal out of it and just as we were going about our day butchering chickens you know she's interested mm -hmm. she wants to help because oh, she sees yeah. us doing it she's every, every, everyone else doing it uh, but it's not she's not freaking out no <laughs> she she got right in there she was helping out and she never was weirded out or grossed out. I mean, sometimes she will just be like, ew, but if it like, you know, if there's like guts spilling out, but <laughs> I mean, everyone else is kind of like, ah, you know, but she's, she doesn't think it's a gross process. She loves chicken butchering day because her friends get to come over and yeah. she'll help out for a little while. And then like, like any normal kid, she kind of does a few birds and then she's like, I want to go play. So yeah, she's really there for like five, 10 minutes. Yeah. And then she was okay, I'm done. And then like, she's out playing. <laughs> yeah. We don't require her to like stay during the whole process. Yeah. I mean, we just kind of, we just let it happen. Like if she doesn't want to help, okay, that's fine. Yeah. And if she wants to help. Okay. Come but on. this is, I mean, she's so, she's young enough where she knows this is her reality. She, this is where she believes her chicken comes from is like raised in a backyard where we weren't we were 30 years old when we realized okay wait we see the process of a chicken being butchered you know we our our realization of where chicken our, our meat comes from is the grocery store that's where we thought our whole entire lives 30 years of our lives yeah. and then she's you know she was four at the time when she you know butchered her first chicken and that's her concept of like that's that's where my chicken comes from it's like, I right. see the process. I know it. I, mean, I think another question that we get uh, since we butcher chickens ourselves is, uh, do you guys, do we feel bad when we yeah. do it? We get that question a lot. <laughs> and uh, it's a very sobering time. Yeah. Even though we have friends, and like I said, we are celebrating. We might be laughing at other things. 
with some friends joking around, but it is still a very sobering moment when you do take a life of an animal to feed yes. your body. But, I mean, I don't know if it's that I feel bad. I mean, I, get, I do feel a little bit sad and, and a little bit weird, but I also think that that's normal. I think you should be feeling bad. Yeah. Right? Like, you should be feeling sad. Yeah. Because that's the, the connection. That's, that's us being connected to our food. Right. Like that's, I feel like that's a normal reaction. Because that, what you said, leads to appreciation. Yeah. That sadness that you feel for taking the life leads to appreciation for that life, for that animal that fed us. We can appreciate the process of raising slowly this bird and all the time and all the effort that we put into it, all the sweat that we put into raising this bird, it's appreciation. We appreciate this meal that's set before us that we cooked and that's going to nourish our bodies and we appreciate it and we don't take it for granted and we don't throw it away. We eat the whole animal, yeah. you know, from, you know, bones and you know everything we make it organ we, we can use everything i mean we can use everything we I mean, even up to uh the blood and it's we, not wasted we right we can put in our compost or right. put in our garden yeah. i mean really everything about that animal is used pretty yeah. much yeah <laughs> and so it, it like i said we do feel bad i mean i i do i do feel bad but i do have to remind myself that this bird has a purpose. This bird has a purpose, whether to, to nourish somebody's body, to, whether to nourish our body, or the coyote, or the fox, or the hawk that eats it, you know? And I, I think Temple Grandin said, um, she has a quote that she said, I'd rather have um, an animal be humanely butchered by us the correct way and humanely, rather than the lion who just savagely, you know, Mm -hmm. eats the bird or eats the animal and i feel like that's so true we're we're loving and appreciating this animal and you know humanely butchering this animal for our food and it's done in a very very good way so yeah like i said i have this appreciation for this animal but i do know that it has a purpose in life yes i mean you can't like sit like a cornish cross you can't let him live because he won't live forever <laughs> right i mean he's meant for me he's meant for me <laughs> yeah so yeah so those were some of uh some uh, chicken processing butchering questions that we would get and uh, I felt like we just wanted to talk with that with you guys and and uh, share our story about like yeah. how it evolved from you know living in the city to where we're at now butchering our chickens who would ever thought that we would be doing this no <laughs> raising our own meat and no way I, I would mean, have never thought if you were to tell me you know 15 years ago when I was working in the fashion industry that I would be butchering my own chickens in my backyard <laughs> But I've been like, no way. <laughs> yeah, I've been like, wow, you're nuts. <laughs> that's that's, who does that? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. But uh... <laughs> so let's talk about our week. What do we do this week? <laughs> we we got new farm animals, which we can't mention in this podcast because yeah, we kind of wanted it to be a surprise. <laughs> yeah, because we haven't put out the video yet. Yeah. Well, hopefully, we put out the video. Tomorrow. Maybe. Soon after after this podcast. Yeah. Um, so if you're watching this podcast a month from now, just go back and check in our, our YouTube yeah. videos <laughs> and see what they... But anyhow, so we did get new animals and I'm excited because we're growing. You know, we've, we've done a lot of chickens. So that's all we've ever had was chickens and it, yeah. we're growing. And this, yeah, it's exciting because we've never had anything but chickens right. on our homestead. Right. Uh, so, you know... This is the a, land. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what happened. And then you've got some projects that you're working on. Yeah, I've been working. Um, I'm actually building a walk-in cooler for uh, my friend Justin and Rebecca Rhodes. Um, and they're building. I'm building a walk-in cooler. Uh, they're helping me build it, too. Is uh, it, It's going to be inside their home. And so I think people think like, whoa, a walk-in cooler in your house? I mean, I think that's really cool. And yeah. like, at the scale that they're they're at, like yeah. they're producing a lot of their food. Like They just harvested- Majority. The, yeah, they just harvested the other day, a hundred pounds of carrots. 
Right. A right. <laughs> hundred pounds of carrots. I mean, and that was one yeah. day's harvest. So I mean, they're doing like 400 yeah. chickens a year. Yeah. They're doing, you know, beef. It's a very larger like, scale. So a like huge, I think they've moved from homestead to farm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I think building a walk-in cooler, if you're doing it at that large scale, it makes perfect sense yeah. because it prevents you. I mean, you don't have to buy so many fridges. Right. You and, know, like, yeah. And you've mentioned sense. in uh, your last video that, you know, market gardeners have these things on their property. Right. I mean, you're essentially a, a, a farm, a working farm yeah. at that point, and you're a market garden uh, pretty much for your own family. And so, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's pretty exciting. I'm building a walk in cooler. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a really nice cooler. So yeah. I'm looking forward to, to getting it done. Yeah. And seeing the finished project. Yeah. But, um, you know, we continue, our gardens continue to grow. We, we produ produce it every day. Yes, I feel like I can't even keep up with it. That is something I wish we had extra hands here. <laughs> Just because, I mean, it's one thing to think like, oh yeah, it's fun to pick things out in the garden. But like, you have to bring it inside. You have to wash it. I mean, we do wash a lot of our veggies outside on the veggie washing station, but then, you know, you kind of fine tune it inside, you know, take off dead leaves of the onions or whatever. And then you have to like either preserve it or eat it right away or store it or freeze it or, you know, yeah, you whatever. Have to do that's something a, with it. like a lot of work. And I feel like I spend most of my day doing that like the harvesting part is the easy part that's easy that's the fun <laughs> part like you're outside the weather's cool yeah it's early in the morning it's the putting it away part it's the putting it away yeah that's difficult <laughs> yeah. yeah oh yeah i think people don't think about that like where yeah. are we gonna put all this stuff i've been freezing and i did my first canning of the year i'm very proud of that what'd you can i canned purple yard long beans we had um a lot of pests in our garden this year rabbits and groundhogs. If you haven't been following our YouTube um, channel, we talk about that a lot on there, is we have groundhogs and rabbits just coming into our garden and helping themselves. And we've even, we've even had baby bunnies born in our greenhouse. I mean, that was cute <laughs> at first, but now they're like living in our garden. And like everything I plant, I planted like, I don't know, three packets of beets and they're just gone just because all the beet tops are gone. Well, they eat them when they're young and tender, so the, the whole beet's gone. So we're talking about getting a fence. We're we've been talking about that for a while now. Yeah, we're going back and forth on what kind of fence, but like, we will, we will get a fence. Yeah. It's just a matter of what, really, or... Or what it's, I just have the to logistics. Like, I just have to like get it. <laughs> yeah, the logistics of it. So yeah, so that's also, have been um, a challenge for us is trying to figure out how we can grow and keep the pest out. But back to the original question, um, yard long beans. We planted some beautiful different varieties of green beans and I was hoping to can all of them, but the rabbits came and ate all of my green beans except for the purple yard long beans. Yeah. And Thankfully, those are very prolific and they've been producing a lot. And yard long beans, they're a yard long, so huge. I can just pick like maybe five strands and that's like enough for a whole meal yeah. for our family. So yeah, they're I'm pretty thankful. amazing. I'm thankful for that. I'm yeah. thankful, yeah. We've got some pumpkins right now that I've harvested. They're just outside curing in the greenhouse. And we've harvested onions today and it's just been it's been good. It's been good. I've, I'm very pleased. Yeah. And then, um, so I think that concludes our podcast this week. But let's talk about, um, we're going to be at some a few events coming up. Right. We've got, uh, okay, the next event that we're going to be at is uh, the Heirloom Expo in Santa Rosa. It's yes, in Santa Rosa? it's in Santa Rosa, California. Yes. It's the National Heirloom Expo and there's going to be a lot of other home uh homesteader youtubers going along with baker creek seeds yeah and baker gonna, creek seeds is sending us yeah um and we're gonna be speaking yes we're gonna be speaking there <laughs> we're gonna be pairing up with the holler homestead they are a youtube channel and we'll be speaking on um, growing food for health yes so that's that's pretty exciting 
we've been we haven't been to California in a couple years. It's been two years. Yes. So I'm so excited because we're gonna make a trip down to see my family in Southern California or hit both yes. of our families actually. And um, we're gonna make I'm a trip so out of it. Excited. So it's pretty yeah, it's pretty exciting. And so I think it's a pretty amazing that we're speaking. You know, they're sending us to go speak. You know, we're from California. And then pairing us up with the Holler Homestead because they're also from California. Right. <laughs> and we, we have a very similar story, so I think that's pretty exciting that we're, we're, we're talking together on this subject, and uh, I think that should be fun. Um, but, and then after we get back from California, probably like a week or two later, yeah. we are going to Virginia at the Homesteaders of America conference. Right. Which I will be speaking there. <laughs> And um, I'll be speaking about uh, digital homesteading, how to share and monetize your land-based living. This is the same talk that I did at the Organic Grower School uh, in the springtime this year that was in Asheville. And so I'll be speaking on one of the days at, uh, at that conference. And also, we'll be having a booth there. Right. And uh, we're going to bring a lot of the things that we make. I'm hoping to bring some of these t-shirts there. <laughs> I'm hoping. Uh, we can make that happen. Yes. So, yeah. And maybe a few of the mugs, too. But mostly his beautiful woodworking items. I know those are such a hot item <laughs> where he can barely keep up. But, yeah, yeah, some woodworking. And then some of my Plain Jane Lorraine apothecary items as well. Yes. So those are two events that are coming up. Those are really big events. Um, so if if you can make either one of those... Yeah, come and say hi. I with. mean, there's a lot of like-minded people, um, a lot of people just growing food, a lot of people just like homesteading. Like, I mean, I would, I would, I would guarantee if 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 you really like that stuff, <laughs> right. that you know, uh, you will have an awesome time there. Yeah, you'll have an awesome time. Like, you'll get to meet like everybody. Everyone's just kind of like walking around and hanging out. And yes, there's food trucks there um, at both events. Yes. We've never been to the National Heirloom Expo before, yeah. but I've seen lots of pictures and talked to people who have been there before, and they say it's completely amazing. It's like a seed expo, right? It's just all about seeds and growing vegetables, and um, you know, just talking with other seed growers and. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it should be a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. But uh, we appreciate you guys listening and watching and uh we'll see you guys next time